the weekend, keep an eye out for uh, over the weekend. Keep an eye out for an email. Um, I'm sure we'll put out an email once the new release is is out and ready. Um, but certainly, uh, keep an eye on uh, on the platform as you're logging in and out for changes. Uh, top right corner, the the bell will get a little exclamation mark over it. But one of the things we're most excited about is an integration with another up and coming startup, kind of like ourselves, uh, which I'll introduce to you guys. Uh, ben is on camera here and hanging out with us and John Harden is off camera, um, driving through the back hills of somewhere and fighting with bad cell phone reception. So um, we're gonna introduce the guys from Sasslio. So if you guys haven't heard of Sasslio, uh, they are a, um, how would you guys describe yourselves best, Ben? I mean, I was gonna say a, um, a SaaS uh, inventory and, and discovery platform. Yeah, I feel like that uh, really you, you short. You, you hit it. Uh, you know, for us, it's all about solving SaaS problems and uh, management, inventory, security are probably uh, the big the big three. And discovery is uh, runs through all those. So yeah, uh, yeah, you hit it. So you know, we've been working with our partners for a long time. You guys have seen our platform, so you guys kind of know what uh, what we're doing. You understand what we what we do right and we've talked for a long time about why when msps start to have this conversation with their clients one of the first things they have to do is take inventory and for the longest time that inventory has been who and what do we support and that for a long time we brought it down to the who obviously is our customers right who's an active director who's in office 365 um the the what was the physical assets, the workstations, the servers, the wireless access points, the the printers, the, the the Chinese cameras with backdoors into Beijing, right? You know, all the things that we're trying to inventory on the network where we're looking for we're looking for problems. Um, and then somehow over the last few years, we've or over the last decade, we've just slowly started to take all of our sensitive data and kind of shovel it out into this cloud thing and just cross our fingers and hope life was good. Um, you guys kind of complete the other leg of a th three-legged stool. Um, do you want to talk about kind of how you guys do it, what you guys do, and then uh, you know we'll circle back to kind of the, the 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 marriage made in heaven of getting this data into our platform so our customers can talk about it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'll kind of I'll kind of give you. Uh, I think to totally understand kind of our mindset and mentality around SaaS, it helps to know that uh, both John and myself were both at an MSP previously. Uh, we lived in a world where we both kind of grew up in the in the knock together and uh, we're constantly seeing tickets around, um, uh, hey, can you reset my password into this you know particular tool? And we kind of look at each other and be like, did you even know they were using that? <laughs> so you know, it's a situation for us where uh, we've kind of been able to live those problems and be on the other side of it, um, which uh, you know about three years ago um, culminated in the creation uh, of Sassio. And you know, for us, um, it's really digging into that story of like, uh, to, to your point, Alex, like knowing what's there is half the battle. Um, being able to understand that uh, uh, the, that discovery being a really important part of our core as a platform and, you know, leading that into some of these other things and the other, other use cases that we use Sasslio to solve. So for us, right, um, we come in, we're able to understand what types of apps exist in the SaaS ecosystem. Um, not just your Dropboxes and your Office 365s, right? It's I also like to include some things that you might not think of as a conventional SaaS app. So things like uh, those vendor portals, right, where you're uploading uh, information, maybe uh, maybe some type of government portal online where you're uploading files that are, you know, for permitting or some types of some things like that. I was um, just thinking about like my my. Um, my accountants portal where I was just uploading tax documents. There you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Important, uh, sensitive stuff, probably. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Get great, great so. examples. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you know, having having us uh, that that data, right? Um, being able to collect that uh, on behalf of MSPs and their customers, um, and then you know, ultimately, how do we use it? Right? It's uh, it's a handful of things. Um, a huge part of that is that whole application inventory story. It's a part of a lot of uh, a lot of those compliance frameworks, right? Are you actually doing uh, application inventory and identity management the way that you're supposed to? Um, that's a big one for us. Uh, and and those know. two, let, stop there for a second, yeah, because true. those two stack on top of each other, right? First, we inventory the application. Then we have to go figure out how people are logging into it. Yep. And if we didn't even know it existed, they're probably logging into it with a shared password or password one, two, three, or whatever, because those are the things that they mostly spring up because they're trying to get around all the yep. things that we've done to make life 
uh, I don't want to say harder for them, but to make life more secure for them, which by default makes it a little more hard for them. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And you, I mean, you hit it right. Uh, you can know something exists, but um, in a situation where you're trying to look at that whole access and identity piece of the equation, um, for us, we have the ability to look at, at hey, are people sharing credentials? Um, we always, almost always find at least a couple where somebody has gone out and created like a company name at gmail.com, right? That the MSP doesn't even necessarily know exists that's being used to, you know, log into key systems or, you know, upload, upload or download files into, you know, tools. So um, at the very yeah, super, least it's installed on the copier. Yep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course. Right? <laughs> you know, and, and we've all seen it. Um, so talk through kind of the, the value prop that you guys have around, you know, not just inventorying it, but how you're having this conversation with the customer. Cause we really lean heavily on not taking all these nerd words back to the customer and having a real human conversation with them. How do we make this a human yeah. conversation without it, without it being a scolding conversation where we're, uh, you know, bad customer, you shouldn't be doing this kind of thing, you know, come do it my way. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'll throw a. We and John up, put up a, a very suspicious Google Drive link, but maybe we'll download it. That is a little suspicious. Uh, that's actually what I was going to hit because that's a newer okay. one for us. Um, uh, so we use it. We kind of came up with this acronym. It's just the word cost, right? Um, you know, the first the first uh, C is uh, that actual uh, word cost uh, stands for the C. Um, think about all the you know the dollars that you could potentially be saving your clients if you're able to identify you know, hey, we have six different file sharing platforms. You're paying for three of them. Let's pare it down. Let's get to the one SharePoint site that we sent, uh, spent hours setting up for you um, that uh, we know exists. So that's one. Um, the O actually stands for opportunity. So in our world, like shadow IT has this very negative connotation that it's like this big scary thing that like hides in the corner of small businesses and ruins the world. Um, it is dangerous, certainly, and there's certainly problems to resolve with it. But uh, for our MSP partners, that O stands for opportunity because um, uh, John likes to say like nobody just woke up one day and decided, hey, I'm going to go sign up for a Dropbox account, right? There's always value in those problems or in that in that data that we're collecting of like, hey, what like why did you do this? Did you not know it existed, or maybe you ran into a you know a file size limit, or um, you know maybe there is a a new application that we could help uh, have a conversation with you to manage better or um, we hear that all the time with a lot of like the marketing tools and things like that, where somebody uh, is head of marketing, they go and sign up and they don't understand that, hey, there's all these integrations that we could be using with 365 and the other tools that are a part of our stack. And that's where that opportunity comes from, because uh, you guys as MSPs are able to have those com the, the right conversations there uh, and bring the right value to the surface that with the, uh, the knowledge and expertise that you have. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the S security, right? Um, shared credentials, uh, everything we just talked about uh, from a compliance standpoint. Uh, we also will look at things like third-party data breaches. So, um, you know, the big one being like Uber recently. I know there was some LastPass uh, ones relatively recently. Cisco was a big one. I think that was last last month. Yeah. Um, looking at, hey, like are people logging into their browser with a personal Gmail credential, right? When they shouldn't be. Um, and being able to report on those things. Hey, I see, uh, you know, my customers are uh, logging into uh, uh, Uber or Cisco with their work domains. Let's have a conversation about uh, this breach impacting them and what we can do to help them. Um, well, and John and I were just talking earlier, the Ponemon Institute released their 2022 data breach, data breach report. Mm -hmm. um, one of the key metrics in there, one of the things that jumped out was 45% of data breaches happen in the cloud, Yep. right? There's security tied to your cloud apps, tied mm -hmm. to your SaaS apps uh, when they're not properly managed. Yep. And that's a really reputable study. It's been going on for what, a decade now? Mm-hmm. So yeah, you yeah, you should have. That? Do you want to put a link to it? Uh, I, I will find it while we're talking. So uh, yeah, definitely some, you know, some interesting use cases. And, you know, the biggest part of that is um, uh, there, there are typically apps that the MSP doesn't know about. Um, you know, nobody would think about, uh, you know, Uber or, you know, that, that one person that signed up for LastPass that they're using themselves and storing work credentials in, right? That's the kind of stuff that we hone in on. Uh, and that whole, that, uh, that T, 
um, that's time, um, you know, lost efficiency. Uh, I always I like to use the file sharing example because it's one of our most common ones. Mm -hmm. If I have uh, the three different departments using six different file sharing systems, uh, there's there's a, certainly an opportunity to cost and a and a time uh, a time effectiveness angle to uh, figure out. All right, let's uh, make sure people are using what they what they say they should be doing. Right, if that makes sense. So. Well, and you also get to where you know these silos just don't play well together, right? Yep. Um, I had a customer just teach me um, about the goals function in Microsoft 365 that I didn't even know existed um, <laughs> as part of what do they call it now? Their um, their Viva platform. Okay. Um, yeah. But you know, anytime you've got something that's off in its own silo, half the company can't access it, a third of the company can't access it, a good group of people are maybe recreating data on their side yep. because that SaaS app doesn't exist. And you wind up with this duplication of data or um, ineffective use of data because it, that data doesn't exist. And I had a client who one department just swore they had to have this access database that they had customized and built from scratch. And it was this thing that they had carried around forever and ever and ever. Um, after 10 years, they finally let me um, blow that thing up, move it into Microsoft CRM. And all of a sudden, two other programs in the same company went well, we share a lot of customers with them. Can we just use the same database and start to, you know, relate contact, contacts and records instead of them printing out half of a database and shipping it over to us when they send us a customer, when they send us a, a patient? And sure enough, they went from these folks who were going into domestic violence counseling, winding up in a shelter, winding up in a job placement uh, part, of the, part of the organization. And that person's record could follow them around digitally. Nobody had to print paper. There was no more risk of sending these really sensitive files across across town with, you know, with all these kind of sensitive records in them. Um, it was it was a huge thing. John yeah. saying, um, speaking of silos, we had a use case where a, a client and a customer of our partners uh, had adopted Airtable in a small subsec subsection of the team. They had built a ton of automation into it and solved a lot of complex problems. The downside was that this was a hip, oh, it was HIPAA data and the system uh, and the workflow, the partner had to work with the customer and the customer ended up spending $80,000 annually to move to Airtable Enterprise for HIPAA compliance. There you go. So if they're not yeah. talking about these things, um, you know, you've got a, um, a, a real serious question here. Um, Elizabeth Clark's asking if you guys are, are SOC 2 compliant at this point. I'm going to guess I know the answer to that since you're so early, um, but. Yeah, not not currently, definitely on the radar here for uh, for uh, towards the end of the year in 2023. Awesome. Awesome. Um, th there will be no shame in this room over that because we're not SOC 2. Either, <laughs> so um, we, we, we hold a pretty, pretty robust security stature, but SOC 2 is a, is a monster undertaking. So totally get for it. Sure. Yeah, and I'll say um, you know, for us, like the, one of the biggest questions we get, right, is like what types of what types of data are you actually capturing? Um, you know, for us, our uh, our collector is very very lightweight, and that's all super intentional. It doesn't have any like remote execution capability, even. So we're pretty much just grabbing like the um, the the URLs, the the EXEs. We run that against a database of like. 60,000 different applications that uh, that we have and then um we do capture like that username function I, I like to uh say that we capture data in a similar way that like a LastPass does except we grab just the the username and the URL we don't grab anything else behind it right um if that makes sense yeah okay. so you guys aren't aren't saving any passwords you're yep. um you know yep. all that kind of stuff yeah, nothing like that. So yeah, not nothing, uh, nothing that really is uh, sensitive other than knowing uh, the site somebody's on and uh, who they are. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. yeah. And we 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 operate with a very similar model, right? Take just enough to get the job done and uh, and stop short of anything that was that's uber sensitive, um, just to make life harder for anybody who who were able to get a hold of the data. God forbid it should happen. Yeah. Um, yep. Uh, I'm not in my garage, Tim. <laughs> Although I get compliments on this background because there's like cars and stuff. There's I cars moving and everything. Cars yeah. moving in the background. I'm like in my incredibly messy office with the uh, ugly curtains behind me. So that's why. That's I awesome. <laughs> I did virtual backgrounds for the first three years. I just put this up once we. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll get there. I'll get there someday. Um, yeah, goals. Th those are goals for when you have way too much free time because it took. Me <laughs> um, so we were kind of working through this this cost, um, you know, cost component. Um, did we get all the way through that? Uh, we did. I think I flew through the last two, yeah. but no worries. Uh, it paints, paints the right picture, right? Of um, you know, right how, you, how you use our, our data. Yeah. And so once we have the data, though, 
the conversation with the customer to make sure that we don't sound salesy, right? It really goes around, um, the, the conversation is one around security, right? Yeah, I think that's, uh, that is a good uh, wedge, right? It's a good starter because, you know, when I think about, about how um, our clients use this, there's a lot of real-time stuff, right? Like if a third-party data breach happens, you want to have that conversation immediately. If you're a HIPAA compliant business and you see credential sharing, you want to have that conversation immediately. Um, but looking at that full app inventory, you know, how what things are changing, what new apps are being introduced, having that conversation more on like a quarterly basis. And we can use uh, kind of security and, um, you know, that whole idea of like there's kind of opportunity and having those discussions as kind of a wedge to um, uh, as a discussion starter, if that makes sense. This reminds me of security awareness training. And and it's funny because John was actually on a call with Finn Security that I was having or a text with Finn Security when we we're talking about this Ponemon report. Um, but this reminds me of security awareness training in that your customer doesn't want you to pick up the phone and go, I saw Google Drive and I need to tattle on Bob, right? Yeah. <laughs> it really needs yeah. to be a more nuanced conversation around, um, you know, where are we missing opportunity to share data? Where are we maybe exposing ourselves that we shouldn't be? Um, what is the actual business cost of using things that are outside of the company, um, you know, the, the company standard? Um, I saw just today that a bunch of banks were fined, I want to say it was one point something billion um, yeah. for sending personal data over non-business, non-encrypted means. And I want to say it was like 1.5 billion or something stupid. 1.8 billion. There we go. Um, so I mean this all plays into those same conversations. So guys, if you're if you're not sure how to um, how to cross this conversation with your customer, you don't have to have a real world scenario from your client base where you know, somebody did something stupid and it caused you a problem. You have the headlines, you have the newspaper, S snip this uh, article, hang on to it. You can talk about it for a year. Um, you know, it is it is absolutely a good one where a bank banks are out there talking about their customers and their loans and their accounts in SMS text messaging, right? And is your organization doing this? Could we find it if it was happening? Right. If somebody's out here on their iPhone uh, grabbing files out of the Google Drive and slinging them out into the iPhone and sending them out in a text message, do we have methods for stop for finding that, for stopping that? Um, what are we doing to make sure that our policies are in place? Tim's going to get all excited because I said policy. Um, <laughs> that our policies are in place that say, if we're going to talk about something like this, it happens on Teams and only on Teams, or it happens on Teams or email. And if it's email, it's encrypted. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we back all of this up with policy but the policy should enable the thing we actually do in our business, right? Don't write it. Don't work, sit with your customers to help them write a policy. That's absurd that they could never keep up with. Um, help them write the policy and then use a tool like this to show that the policy is working and, and, and that you're following uh, what, what you're supposed to be doing. At least that's my opinion from the outside looking in as just the, the dumb sales guy. Yeah, no, I think it, I think it makes a lot of sense, right? And uh, being able to tie into some of those real world examples, and unfortunately, they happen all all too uh, regularly, right? Yeah. Um, in in our world that we live in right now. So, uh, yeah, no, totally agree with you there. Well, and I'll give you one more scary real world example that we dealt with at my environment at my MSP. Uh, we had a debt collector who had a salesman, and so this guy literally sold debt collection services, and he had an ACT database. If you guys remember ACT, it was you could export that database to your custom ACT database files, template, whatever, and uh, without knowing it, and this was 2006 or 2005, I don't know, it was forever ago, before this was really a thing, um, the guy was exporting that database and uh, gmailing it to himself every night. And when he left the company, he took the database with him. And this guy came to me after the guy had, had been fired or left the company, I don't remember, and said, you know, I think he stole my data and I need you to go prove it. And when we went to the guy's machine, logged in as him, started to look, we could see the file trail. We could see he was exporting and everything. He was downloading every single night. His internet mm -hmm. history was still there with, we, you know, we didn't have the tools that we have today to catch it happening in real time or even to be able to report on it quarterly. But after the fact, we were certainly able to go back and find it and see that it had been happening. And this guy walked out with an entire sales history uh, of, of everyone he had ever talked to. And he went to work for a, a debt collection company across town. And what did he do? But open up his ACT database and start rocking and rolling, right? With all of his leads that he had before. And that can be really damaging to your client base. 
Um, you know, it, it could end up on a billboard on the side of the road. In this case, that's probably not the end of the world, um, but it ended up in a sales guy's hands that's out there using it against you all day. So those are the kind of things that we just need to be preparing our clients to, you know, th there's a reason we build these policies and it's not to be, to be a jerk to our customer. We don't sit here and go, I don't want you to use Google drive because I don't sell it. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't want you to yeah. use Google drive because it could harm your business. And it's in my best interest for you to be around, to write me paychecks for a long, long time. And I used to say that to my customers and I could, I can get away with that. If you can't get away with it, at least tell your customer, I want you to be around, you know, to be in business with me for, for, for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, I think every uh, every MSP we talk to has at least one uh, horror story of a off board gone wrong or a high profile employee leaving right where um, you know something was missed like that. So that's a, that's a really great example. Yep. And uh, and John's thrown the pricing out there in chat just in case anybody wants to know. Um, it's out there. It's easy. It's simple. I I can do the math, so you guys will be fine. Um, and then of course integration with Lifecycle Insights. So we're gonna roll this into the standard reporting deck that you guys get to take out to your clients when you get all said and done. So just like we did with Augment, when we put their new stuff out, when we got Breach Secure Now and, and uh, um, Know Before in the platform, um, when you go to more reports next week, you're going to see SAS Leo sitting there in the more reports section. You'll have some, uh, some data that you can pull from. It's actually available right now to early adopters. Um, if you're just dying to get a hold of it today, you can put in a support request this afternoon and they'll flip the flag for you. But uh, other than that, it's going out for everybody for general availability on, on, on Saturday or Sunday. I'm not sure exactly when these guys who work all weekend will, uh, will get it delivered. They're starting at nine tonight when it's Ooh. out the door. Okay. So okay. you guys will probably have it tomorrow morning. <laughs> yeah. I would think. Um, can we get a show and tell? Um, we will definitely do a, um, a walkthrough of the reports in our platform um, next week. Ben, if you want to hang out long enough to give everybody a really high level show and tell, that really wasn't what we intended this call to be. And I don't want anybody ever to come to this call and feel pitched. But we also well, I can to... I can show the integration <clears throat> in a preview site right now if you want. Yeah, we can. Let's let's start there. Mm -hmm. um, And, you know, if you guys want to compare and contrast against the other vendors, I'll say we're Switzerland over here. So, um, you know, no running our other our other vendor partners into the ground. If you want to, Wes, if you want to take it offline with uh, with Ben and John, uh, they can throw their LinkedIn or their email out there and you guys can take that conversation uh, uh, offline. But we, we we love all our partners equally over here. So I'm, I'm sure that compare and contrast can be nice, but we'll save that for another call. I um All right. So in typical Lifecycle Insights fashion. When you go to the integration page, there will be a SAS Leo button, a tile. Um, it will require, it'll have a blue button in here um, that you can click on and set up your, uh, let's see. Am I right, Ben? You have a blue button and then you go out and grab it and uh, they don't, they'll have to pull something back or will it auto, auto magically happen? Yeah, so we have, um, it's a uh, just a pretty simple uh, API key that you pull from our platform. You plug it into LCI and then you hit one button, everything starts kind of syncing over. Okay, um, perfect. So yeah, pretty, pretty easy. All of our integrations are a little bit nuanced and I right. haven't this one enough. So sure. then you get the two Sasleo reports. So Ben, I will let you speak to this and then tell me if you want me to jump to the detail view first. Um, yeah, well, I think you can kind of see across the top there, just some of the things that we really hone in and focus on is uh, client discussion points, you know, um, and the reason we included some of those graphs is I think it's really important to understand um, your, your uh, SaaS ecosystem, the things that are happening on uh, not only when they happen, but also on that quarterly basis. So are we seeing more shared credentials than we did last quarter? Why is that happening? Right. Um, it, did our application stack significantly increase? Do we have people that are introducing shadow IT, right? Um, this kind of that aggregate level of detail. Uh, we do have uh, a handful of different categories of apps too. So when I mean my categories is kind of that risk status. So anything that holds like customer data, your file sharing, your CRM, those types of things, they're going to be a little bit higher on the list. Um, the other one I'd add into that, we always hear, um, you know, people self-deploying their own like VPNs and those types of things. Those apps rank a little bit higher. And, you know, we made sure to build that into the structure of the report. So you can, guys can kind of hit those things first as you have that conversation with clients. Um, 
And then, yeah, Marnie, if you wanted to uh, flip over to that to that detailed view, uh, just this to give you will let me remind folks that uh, we're chain moving the buttons on you and we'll have <laughs> lots of drop downs in the upper right. So tomorrow when you log in and you can't find your tabs along with a back button in the upper left and back button over here, yeah. drop down over here. Sorry, Those darn SAS guys moving all the buttons overnight. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so you can kind of, you guys can kind of see the structure of the different types of uh, applications that we ultimately collect. Um, you know, you see some HubSpot, some Adobe, some Zoom, some other different things there, uh, trying to understand when those were added um, in the scope of uh, kind of that client's ecosystem. And then also, you know, things like, you know, how many people are using it. And I think that drop down up there at the top left uh, will give you, let you flip through the categories. Hey, did we have any breaches happen? Um uh, the, uh, looking at user counts, looking at, um, I think a really interesting one and, uh, maybe the security logs, that's kind of where we can get a little bit deeper into the detail on, uh, Hey, somebody, so-and-so, uh, you know, John used, uh, Mary's, uh, credentials to log into this particular tool. You know, let's have um, a conversation about why that happened. <laughs> so how do you guys figure that out? That's a really interesting data point. Yeah. So for us, the the actual agent that we installed, it's two things. It's one on the desktop. Uh, basically, the desktop agent collects who that person is, right? We're using the login to Windows and not being able to understand that. And then we also have that Chrome extension. Um, the Chrome extension, or uh, I guess it's a browser extension across Chrome, Firefox, all the big ones, right, uh, that we have supported. And uh, those kind of talk to each other and are able to determine um, who's logged in and what are they logging into or accessing in the browser. Um, so that's, that's kind of how we're going to identify. Yeah, and it's, I think, you know, when we get to the level of depth and the detail, right, there's a lot of uh, a lot of interesting things that we can, uh, we can do with that. Uh, uh, both now and down the line as well. Well, and, and just in the in the interest of high level data points that should matter to your customers, that is that one ranks up there uh, with, with as one that number one is a great data point, and number two, it's really hard to come by. Mm -hmm. So, yep, yeah, for sure. That's so we'll, awesome. You know, we'll work uh, the shared credentials. I always I always mention. I think I mentioned before, like we always find somebody that's created like a company at gmail.com address. We call those personal accounts, right? A Gmail, a Yahoo, an MSN, like whatever it might be, uh, and flag off of those uh, as well, kind of as they're as they're created. So uh, it's just lets you get into a little bit more of the detail on the uh, uh, the actual activity that's happening inside the apps versus just saying, uh, hey, so-and-so use this particular app, if that makes sense. Tim says you should tie into Roost. And I believe what he means is you should automatically offboard anyone who logs into sales at anything.com. I think that's what he means. Yeah, yeah, we've. Uh, <laughs> I've, uh, I've definitely had that suggestion before. It seems like a super, super yeah. promising one. Can we just um, automatically fire anybody who uses your credential like that? There, yeah. there, you, there you go. <laughs> just auto off board. While we are here, I would like to show off one little piece. We can now, uh, after this weekend, you will be able to download to doc or PDF. Um, with or without a logo. So I'm gonna show you those two new options because this will happen on all the reports. With the logo, so we, we're refreshing um, the reports. So this is more the look that you will get in reports, the gray bar, et cetera. You can see I've added our logo here. If you choose to opt to not have a logo, um, there will be kind of a little just generic summary of why uh, we're looking at this type of report. So lots of uh, lots of pretty new reports coming out as well. So John mentioned, uh, I want to just circle back for a second and then we'll pick back up here because John mentioned this is extremely valuable for onboarding and offboarding employees. Um, something we haven't really talked about and, and some MSPs have solutions for this and some don't, but wouldn't it be nice to know that when Marnie fires me tomorrow, she had visibility into every shared account I've used, every application I've logged into, everything that's going on. And that's what I think that's what John was pointing out. I made jokes around onboarding, but mm -hmm. uh, or around offboarding folks. But I mean, it really is valuable to be able to go back. And some of the password managers and such have that if someone's actually going there and using the shared password out of the mm -hmm. password manager. But this yeah. gives you one more level of visibility into where those folks are going, which I think is pretty powerful. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And yeah, you know, something like a password manager is a good resource. What we find is it usually doesn't tell the whole story, right? Um, especially if, you know, people are installing their own things or, you know, signing up under those personal Gmail accounts. And uh, you brought up a really good point earlier just about 
data. And that's another element we're really focused on figuring out where people are actually uh, putting their data. And um, I will say we relatively recently, probably a couple of weeks ago, we also released single sign-on tracking. So we can see like, did somebody use Google SSO or Microsoft SSO or, you know, the tools like that to be able to uh, kind of centralize that offboarding piece and understand what's tied there and what's not, if that makes sense. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. I love it. So I will give you guys the opportunity if you want, go ahead and throw your credentials or your, or not your credentials. We were talking about credentials. Yeah. Go ahead and throw your credentials. Throw, in throw them in. <laughs> um, yeah. That was just, that was just a test. Um, you know, throw your contact info in the chat. If anybody wants to reach out, um, you know, we didn't do slides or anything fancy today because we really just wanted to have a soft conversation with what I think is an awesome product that we're getting ready to partner up with. And um, so feel free. I mean, I thought you should throw all John's out there. I mean, Call, call John. He's the sales guy. That's true. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you can, um, you know, you can, you're welcome to reach out to those guys. Um, I, I can vouch for them as human beings. I haven't used their platform, but I've, I've been kind of watching it as we've been, um, you know, working towards this integration. Um, super impressed. So anybody have any questions before we, uh, before we let these guys go? Cause I know John's hoofing it cross country and, uh, <laughs> and such. And then Marnie, we can hang out for just a couple minutes and click through a few more things. If anybody wants to see it. Do you guys have an NFR for internal use, Ben? Yep. Yeah, we do. There you go. That was a tough question, Tim. Yes. <laughs> Wait, Alex, you prefer to say it depends. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, that kind of breaks your your it's, typical framework. Your it policy. wasn't my. In fairness, it wasn't my answer. Okay, that's. I right. would have answered with it depends right. on who. It you depends. Are. Yes. Then depends. good thing you were how, here. How, how much we like it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Um, John, John did just, yeah, that's a perfect sales versus product. Right there. <laughs> right. And my product guys have been training me a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, John did, I was going to say uh, uh, two things we did recently. Um, uh, we have worked with uh, Tom Lawrence as well as uh, Channel Program. I, most uh, folks in the MSP space know of the two. Uh, so if you want to just like check out a demo right now and dig a little bit deeper, like those are two resources you can go and just uh, you know Google us and find us that way too. Yeah. Got to love a Tom Lawrence video too because he, he will call it like he sees it. I, yeah, I for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Tom is, Tom <laughs> is a good it. human being, but uh, he lives a little too close to Slagle to not just call it like it is. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's just what it is. So those Ohio guys. All right. Awesome. Well, yeah, I appreciate the opportunity, guys. Yeah, Absolutely. For really, really excited to, to get this launched and uh, yeah, looking forward to, to uh, watching folks uh, get value out of it. I think you guys should start to see this in the platform by the sounds of what Marnie was saying, probably as long as, long as everything goes appropriate Saturday morning. So um, don't work all weekend. Come back and play with it Monday. It will still be here. That's what our developers do. So you don't have to. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> That's the, that, is, that is the plan. Yep. So awesome. with that, we're going to end a little early today. I know John's kind of drive in and it's a crazy Friday for a lot of folks. If you guys have questions, need anything specific, want anything specific, we'll hang out for a couple of minutes, but uh, um, we'll be happy to let you guys enjoy your Friday and, and kind of head off into the sunset, especially if this is your last call of the day. For those of you on the West Coast who it's like 1.30 and we're just kind of poking at you and laughing at you because you have to go back to work and we're bragging about getting to be done for the day. I'm sorry. Um, move over here where life is better. <laughs> although rainy <laughs> right right yeah I, I, don't, I don't know about the better alex uh, <laughs> your, your day just starts earlier than ours and that is true and i am not a morning person i would actually marty that would be good for me i would be uh, oh okay wouldn't West that be West something West. alex and i would be logging on at the same time if he moves out to california no no, oh, no it'd be no, the no, other no, way you'd no, have no, to move to california oh that, you would have yeah. to move right. yeah you'd have to move to california right. yeah this is the place for me because yeah, if I had to get up earlier to work with the folks on the West Coast, I would not make it. I, oh, I just wouldn't. Point. Had that backwards. I would die. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got a West Coaster who who starts at 6 a.m. And she's, she's ecstatic to start at 6 a.m. And if I start at 6 a.m., it's because I want to, not because I have to. I started at, at 5.45 this morning, and that is a rarity for me. <laughs> yeah, that's because I had to take the truck to the shop before my fiance went to work. Ah, fun yeah. stuff. Yeah. Hey, Alex. I get ready for the rain. What you got, Tim? So, based off the conversation last week and the week before, you know, talking about customer success and talking about assessments and kind of, I put together a new assessment that I'm trying to now fight in Excel to upload to your platform. But I think it might be beneficial because 
it's all about asking the business questions for your clients. Like, how do you make money? Like around revenue share, around nobody business processes. That. What's that? So nobody cares about that. No, those well, are great you know, so, so we always talk. You're having? No, it's, I'm not having a struggle. I just need the time to do it or okay. I can just give it to you and Mark and have you guys do it. But it's basically 14 business questions you should be asking your clients that has nothing to do with technology. You hear that, Mark? He's volunteering you work. Hey, man, let's go. <laughs> I mean, he put me in there, but I just ignored that part. I mean, I'm just, I, yeah, you know. Just send over what you one, got. We'll take a look at it. One arm paper hanger, but I just, I've used it on a couple of other, this is from yet last week's conversation where we were talking about business processes and like, I think somebody talked about succession planning. Like it yeah. got me thinking like, Oh, these are the questions. Like I should just put this in LCI for everybody else to use. So, cause I think it might be beneficial to everybody with awesome. non-technical questions to ask business people. Yeah. Got it. So I was um, not I'll, building that at, at 545 Joe. In fact, that took four weeks of, of an hour here and an hour there. That thing took freaking forever. But yeah, I would not do, I would not get up at 545 to do that. I would just wait five weeks. <laughs> But I'm glad everybody appreciates it as much as I do. So since I put it up there, I've had a bunch of people mention it. That was a lot of work, but it was fun. It brings, it brings the kid in me back out. I'm only in trouble because it's in my office and now my fiance doesn't get to look at it. And she's as much of a Star Wars nerd as me. All right. Well, with that, guys, we're going to turn everybody loose at, at, uh, at almost, almost four o'clock on a Friday. Um, if you're on the West Coast, I hope you. Are, I hope your day goes quickly. If you're on the East Coast, I hope your day stays dry. And we'll go with that. Everybody be safe. Yep. Have a good Everybody one. Everybody be safe. And if you need anything, this community's here for you. Find us on Slack. Find us on LinkedIn. Whatever. If you're in the middle of this crap and you need something, don't hesitate to reach out. Hey, props, guys, on the new reports. By the way, every time you update the reports, they look better and better. So we, Thanks, we appreciate that. Nice. We and, hear you. I like, I'm excited I, about I, that. The word crisp comes to mind. Yet. Oh, I like that. Our developers will like to hear that. Crisp, yeah, report, crisp is the crisp and professional. We, we love it. Thank I like you. it. Good job. Like it. That's, Thank that's you. what we aim for, but uh, we know it's a, just a forever work in progress, but I appreciate the feedback and I know they will. Yep. Have good ones. Thanks. Everybody. Thanks guys. Thank